So you're thinking about going to a protest. What should you know? Hi, my name is Ryan Canoni. I'm an attorney with Worth Law Office here in Tahlequah. And over the past few years, we've seen protests a lot in the media. Uh, we've seen protests from everything from you know economic situations uh, to social, social issues, uh, political protests. Those have been pretty big, especially during election years. And so there's a lot of people getting involved with protesting. And so I decided to do a little video kind of talking a little bit about uh, some of the criminal implications. Uh, so some things that maybe you should be aware of uh, that an attorney can help with if you're gonna go to a protest. Uh, and this kind of spiraled out of uh, a friend of mine a few years ago wrote a book and asked me if I could give some, you know, here's a few uh, suggestions of, of things people going to a protest should think about. And over the past you know, few months, this has kind of been on my mind, so I decided to do a video about it. Uh, so the first thing is if you're going though, I'm not talking about a protest organizer. There's a whole separate issue there, but you're just, you know, John Q public, you're going to express your beliefs, uh, in a nonviolent way. You want to go there and support, uh, whatever cause it is. Uh, a few things you should think about before going to a protest. Uh, most people, now I can't say all, but most people going to a protest don't wake up thinking, Hey, I'm going to go to jail today. Uh, that's not usually something that, they, that people think about. I myself have been to a few protests for different issues I believe in, and uh, that was something I was thinking about, but I'm you know, an attorney, so I'm not usually, I'm not thinking the same way everyone else is on some of this stuff. Uh, but most people go to just express their point of view, to be with like-minded people, and to get a message out. That, that's the goal. Uh, it's not to you know, burn cars or buildings or take over a capital, you know, it's, it's, it's to go and get a message out. So that's, you know, most of your protests are going to be on that, but you never know when there's going to be other people there who want to start something more. So it's good to go ahead and, and make your own safeguards and put them in place uh, just in case that happens while you're there. Uh, and also be kind of vigilant of those people. You don't really want to be around the people who are probably going to get arrested pretty soon and be all over the news. Um, so your first thing I would that you might want to look into is are you in a bail bond state? So some states, uh, most of them in fact, require if you you have a, a right to bail, meaning that you have a right to be re released and not be held um, in jail. But uh, most states put a, a condition on this as bond. Uh, it's a surety. It's 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 something to ensure that you're going to come back, that you're going to uh, actually. Uh, show up on your court day and be there. Now, uh, this is usually monetary, meaning that it's uh, you know your bond is set at one thousand dollars, whatever it's set at. Um, so, if you're in one of these states, then there are bonds persons that you go to. You pay a certain percentage of. So, if your bond's a thousand dollars, they may charge you a hundred, or uh, usually it's between eight and thirteen percent, I believe, um, and then they'll help you bond out. It's pretty important that you check on this before you go to a protest, even if you think that everything's going to be fine, great. Uh, at least get that contact information, uh, put some money aside in case you have to make a bond because uh, you would rather do this on the front end than be sitting in jail for a week uh, trying to get this all sorted through calling friends and family. Um, so if you are not in a bail bond state, though, there are certain states and even certain um counties within bail bond states that allow a pretrial release program. Uh, this is kind of like probation on the front side in a way. Uh, so if you're arrested uh, before you're charged, or sometimes if you're arrested and charged pretty quickly, uh, they will allow you to do pretrial release. Uh, the federal government does this with a lot of their uh, Fed cases where you are assessed for risk. And depending on what your risk assessment is, they may let you out with, you know, call us the day before court to check in, uh, call us every day to check in, here's an ankle monitor, whatever stipulations they put on you for your risky behavior, uh, a risk to commit a new offense, I should say. Uh, so some, some places are like that, but most places you're gonna be cold hard cash. Uh, either you pay it yourself or you get a bonds person to pay it. So bonding, that's something to consider uh, if you're going to a protest. Second thing, kind of selfish, but I'm gonna go ahead and throw out there, just as important as, as making sure you can get out of jail is making sure that you have someone to help maybe keep you out after that. Uh, getting an attorney. Uh, you can retain an attorney, you can go talk, uh, 
you hit us up on our, our number, you can give us a call or our, our com page. Uh, we at least we have your contact. You have our contact info. We have yours. Um, if you are really concerned about it, some attorneys will take a retainer where you can pay them a certain amount uh, just to be, you know, ready that if you call, they're ready right then to come try to help you. Uh, so, or maybe even some attorneys I know will retain and even go to the protest with people uh, or be somewhere nearby in case something happens. Uh, this is. Uh, you're, I, I know I put it at number two, but it's it's really kind of right up there with number one. Uh, you want to have an attorney, uh, if not retained, at least talk to them about it because you want to be able to get an attorney as fast as possible uh, whenever you're dealing with these situations. So uh, those are two big things. Um, I, obstruction is usually, I think what I already mentioned, is kind of one of the charges uh, that you can be... Uh, Actually, I don't think I've mentioned that yet. So uh, the number one thing you're probably going to be charged with is obstruction. Uh, that in Oklahoma is extremely broad. In most states, it's extremely broad. Uh, basically, it just means that you're delaying, interfering, obstructing an officer. Uh, this can be anything from you wouldn't get out of the way to uh, they, you, know, you were part of a group and they slapped it on everybody. It's a very broad charge. It gets charged a whole lot. Um, now, one thing to consider if you're having interactions at, the, at a protest that law enforcement become part of, uh, you can, at least in Oklahoma and in most states, you can record what they're doing, uh, but many states also have some qualifiers on that. So for Oklahoma, you can record as long as you're not interfering. So if you're getting up in the officer's face, if you're preventing them from arresting somebody, yeah, you're recording, but that's not going to protect you. You're still going to get charged with obstruction through that. Uh, these are just a few things to think about. There is a whole plethora. There's tons of books on the subject. Um, there's a lot of I could do on these videos, but I don't want to make a 30-minute video. So if you have questions, if you're thinking about going to a protest and you're concerned, you want to make sure you have an attorney uh, that can help you out as soon as possible, then give us a call. Uh, you, like I said before, TahlequahAttorney.com. Uh, you can give us a call to our phone number, that 918-932-2800 number, and uh, someone should be able to assist you. Thank you.